Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the Shipton Mill Double Zero Pizza Flour. The mill is by Royal Appointment, so I'm really looking forward to using this. The pizza it produced was fantastic. Just look at them pictures. But before we go any further, let's check out the website. I've got the flour from ShiptonMill.com, £1.85 for a kilo, and the protein levels are 13.7%. So we need 630 grams of water, just measuring that out. Looks fantastic and we need one gram of yeast and then mix those together just as a side note if you've got instant yeast and you've had it open for quite a while maybe it's worth investing in a new can and then you'll always ensure that you're going to get best results okay that looks all mixed in so there's the ship to mill double zero pizza flour and we'll start to gradually add that to the yeast and water mix so using a fork start to mix that flour in with that fork and one of the things I noticed first off of this flour it probably could have done with a bit of a sieve to be fair because it was quite lumpy at the beginning and uh, it did take a bit of extra mixing so what you'll notice on this video is I'll be trying to show you those uh, lumps and getting them knocked out so it might be a bit more of a whisking technique required here just to get those lumps out so if I'm using this flour again I'll definitely be using a sieve just to make it a bit more uh, finer. So we're continuing to gradually add in the flour and again still using that fork and as you're building up the flour and water mixed together it becomes a lot more stiff and like I've said before it goes into a, like a batter and then it goes like into a really thick paste so we're getting into that like paste consistency now so it's becoming a lot more stiffer to work with uh, and again there you go I'm just using a bit of a whisk just to try and get the uh, flour lumps out. So you know this flour did take a little bit of extra work and again it probably could do with a sieve beforehand. So I'm just going to continue to make the pizza dough and adding some more flour there but whilst that's happening I'd just like to say thank you very very much on behalf of myself and Oliver for those that have taken the time to subscribe, uh, to ask some questions, leave a comment, liking the video and even sharing the video. Those actions really are helping us on our YouTube journey together. So this dough is coming along really, really nice now. It's becoming really, really thick. And we'll be just about ready to put this onto the work surface. As you can see, look, it really, really is thick and sticking to the fork. So just taking that dough off the fork and we'll tip some flour onto the work surface. There we go. Just saving some back in the bag tip the dough onto the flour that's on the work surface and then a little bit of flour that's left in the bag we'll just run that round the bowl that the dough was in and that just makes sure as usual it gets all the flour and dough out and we're maximizing the amount of pizza dough that we can actually make and no flour is going to go to waste so tip that onto the top that looks fantastic so now it's time to fold in the flour into the dough and there you go, it's just a case of just rolling that dough into that excess flour that we've got there and pressing it down. So there you go, just pressing it down with your fingers, turning it over, keep, keep flipping it over into the flour and over time it will pick up all that flour and what you'll end up with is a dough ball that's ready to knead. And because we're using a high protein flour, it really did take all the hydration. So we could have probably gone higher than the 63%. And that's hence why it took quite a bit of time to incorporate all that flour. But once it's in, which it looks like it is now on the pictures, we'll do a quick roll around. There we go. Picking up all the last little bits of flour. And then once we've done all that, it'll be time to start to knead. And we need to knead for about 10 minutes. So I received some feedback about kneading the dough for 10 minutes and that it was quite long. I kind of like to knead the dough for a lot, quite a long time and just make sure that all the flour is in and that we're starting to really build up that gluten. Um, especially with this one, with it being a higher uh, protein level, we really need to make sure that we are doing that. So 10 minutes is probably quite a minimum. You probably could knead this for about 15 minutes or so to make sure we get that gluten built up. So I don't think you can over knead pizza dough, um, I really don't. So one of the things I didn't notice about this uh, dough is that it became incredibly, incredibly smooth quite quickly. 
And considering that we had a bit of an issue earlier with the lumps in the flour, when we first started this recipe, it's done remarkably, remarkably well so far. So just continuing to knead that. And at this stage, it was becoming really, really smooth. So we are getting to that stage now where we've done our 10 minutes of uh, kneading and we're going to start to shape it into a tight ball. So just shaping that round and then what we'll do next is we'll cover that up for one hour. And after one hour, there we go, look at that, looks fantastic. So we need to put in 25 grams of salt now, we just need to make sure we're folding that in. Use a dough scraper to take it off the work surface. If it does stick down, it probably will do. And then we just need to flatten out the, the dough and then add in the salt and fold it over. And that just makes sure that all that salt's evenly distributed. And that when we come to doing the final five minute knead, um, that we haven't got lots of salt lumps and that salt's nicely distributed in there. So knead for another five minutes. It's only a quick one on this. And again, that just makes sure that we're building up any added gluten. And it'll just make sure that this dough is really, really strong. And that's what we need when we start to move into making the pizza. So just a bit more final kneading. So whilst I was kneading this at this stage, I did notice that it was really, really tight now. The pizza dough and was quite difficult actually to get it back into shape and uh, was making it so it was soft enough to knead. So just goes to show you how strong that pizza flour is. So after five minutes, again, just a couple of taps because it would just come in a bit sticky. And we'll shape it into a bowl. And one of the things I really did notice now is how smooth this is. Look at that. Perfectly, perfectly smooth. So it really, really is a strong dough, this. Really, really is. So we'll pop that back into the bowl. And then we'll cover it with, well, you guessed it, a shower cap, guys. And then we need to let it rest for 19 hours. Here it is before. And after 19 hours, so let's get down to it and make some pizza balls. Most exciting time, let's see what's under the shower cap. And I can tell you now, it looks like it's definitely risen and we've got lots of gluten and lots of strands in there and lots of structure. Look at that. Wow. This is one of the best formed pizza doughs that I've ever seen. That structure inside there was absolutely fantastic. Not seen that for a long time with some of the pizza flowers that myself and Oliver have reviewed. Absolutely fantastic. It's stuck to the shower cap. It's not a problem. It comes off the shower cap quite easily. So 230 grams per pizza bowl. Just using a bit of the uh, smaller flour there. Just put up a little bit on the scales just to make sure we're not sticking to the scales. So just need to break off a dough ball of around 230 grams perfect and now we just need to shape it into a pizza ball and with this flour as you can see there's hardly anything stuck on my hands it was fantastically easy to do no sticking at all so we'll pop it in one of the pizza boxes and as usual we've got those from poundland and just do a bit of the lid as well pop that in there and then we need to let them rest for five hours here they are before And after five hours. So it's pizza time coming right up. Here we go then. It's the best bit into pizza making. So put some smaller flour on the top and then we'll just gently remove that from the tub onto a bed of smaller flour. And then we'll just turn it in there. Use plenty of smaller flour either side. And then we need to start to push that out if you get any air bubbles just pop them they're in the crust just stops that burning when it goes into the pizza oven so just starting to form the base now and just using the steering wheel method there and that just makes sure that we get rid of any excess smaller flour there wipe the work surface down we're trying to keep the uh, smaller flour down there reason being is that it does burn in the pizza oven and can give you a bit of a bitter taste. 
if you have too much on there. So that's the base formed. I'm using the Mutti Classic sauce today. And it really, really tasted fantastic. As always, it's my favourite. Bit of the grated mozzarella on there. And then we're going to pop some pepperoni on. And again, we're using the uh, Sainsbury's pepperoni. And this is Oliver's. He likes Sereno ham, but he prefers his to be cooked. I know that's not to everybody's taste, but that's his choice. So just putting on some fresh mozzarella now, just filling in those gaps. Just one or two pieces and just making sure that's dry. And then onto the peel and then we'll take that off to the oven. So into the oven, 400 degrees on this. And this is no editing on this bit. This is all shot in real time, but we've just slightly speeded up the images. So we're gonna go in with that turning peel and we're gonna do the usual turn it 180 degrees. And you'll be able to see that the, what was at the back of the oven is now at the front. And that's, that crust is nicely cooked. And you know, you just wish you could have smell of vision I've said it several times before, but it would be a great thing in this sort of thing because this pizza smells fantastic. So just turn that to 90 and then we'll turn again another one 80. And look at that pizza, it looks fantastic. Let's get it on the chopping board. And as we're putting this video out over the coronation weekend, just thought we'd have a, a nice union flag there. So looking underneath, looks fantastic. Let's open it up. Look at that. Oh, mouth-watering. We'll give that a turn. And then we'll just cut the other side open. And then what we'll do is we'll open that crust up. This pizza, by the way, tasted fantastic. The dough is soft. The base was beautifully cooked. And I've got to say, ship to Millflower for the price that you pay. It's worth every penny. And this is one of my favourite flowers that I've tried so far. And I would advise give it a go, this one. I really, really would. So, did you like the video? Please leave me a like if you did. And leave me a comment if you've used this flower before, if you've got any questions. But all I'm going to say is bye for now and see you in the next time.